Okay, so it's a pleasure to start with the second lecture of the professor. Thank you very much for coming back. And so I hope it's because the first lecture was good, but someone pointed out maybe because it was 10 minutes short, and so <laughs> yeah. you just like it in terms of. Okay, so just in case you haven't uh, been here yesterday, so the, with the plan of the lecture, there are six fairly independent ones, and today we will do part two for the line of variety. Okay, so this is where the lecture actually starts. So uh, there, there, there are three basic questions that we want to consider. The first, what are the correct analogs of smooth projective curves in genus and history? So, and then, what are the correct analogs of stable curves that define as a boundary of the moduli of, of the, the compactification by the linear? And one word. And then the question three, what are the correct analogs of flat families of stable curves? And now we will answer questions one and two in this lecture, but probably not three. Okay. And so, so we have to go back to the economical models of algebraic varieties. And so let X be a smooth and proper variety. This uh, variety and then and to pick some m and then choose a basis in the global sections of the m's power of the dualizing sheet or, or a basis of the m times canonical class. So that, that defines a map of x into some projective space and then you just take the explosion. Now, uh, so, so, so for curves, Genus at least two, as soon as I believe M is at least at least three, this map is an isomorphism, so that means that image is really, really stabilized. For surfaces, uh, general type, the map is not, necess not necessarily an isomorphism because it, it contracts all the minus one. And now, once you get rid of, of minus one curves, you still might have some rational curves, except in the section minus two, the map also contracts these. But sort of once you get rid of these, then for M, at least five, the images, they stabilize, they are isomorphic. But in higher di dimensions, to start with Itaka, could only prove that the uh, that those images, they stabilize at least birationally, and sort of not for all large M, but for M sufficiently divisible. Okay. And so, uh, so no, but at least this allowed him to define the Kodaira dimension, so that's the dimension of the image, and that the variety is, is, is general type and this map is birational. And now the, uh, the, the so the big theorem here is the existence of canonical models. So you just have the same you have the same setup as before. And now the the big thing is that the same that whatever happened for some curves and surfaces, that these images they stabilize up to isomorphism. Uh, they are also true here, at least this way I'm sufficiently divisible. So that can be sufficiently divisible, then these images they stabilize up to isomorphism, and it's exactly oops, wrong one. And it's exactly the 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 of this ring. Okay? And so it just take all M M has to be non-negative otherwise there are, there are no sections. Now now in some sense the only hard thing to show that this ring is actually a finitely generated ring, and so then when you take this project something, something sensible. But I mean, that was the really hard thing to show that this ring is a, a, actually finitely generated. Okay, so uh, now, yeah, so the, the terminology is not, 
they are completely uniform. Most people, when they say canonical uh, model, they are assumed that we are in the general type case. So then, this X canonical model is birational to X. But, but, uh, but this isomorphism and the finite generation is back all the uh, In that case, this, this, this approach can be a lower dimension. Okay, so I so you know, I mean I want to do moduli like theory, so I just just sort of use all of this uh, the theory as a black box. I mean it's it, it was a sort of major interest in its in its own right. So the 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 final generation of this ring, I don't think it was asked that way, but basically Castano and then requests new or new things that, that now we, 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 we view as almost equivalent. And so the finishing touches were done by, uh, by Mumford. It's a, it's a commentary in the collective works of Kariski. This exists. And the, the, the major breakthrough was by, by Mori, who understood that this might be through in dimension three and, and eventually we proved the three dimensional case with a few other people assisting. Uh, then in dimension four, there was a big preprint of Shakurov that was eventually understood by the court in the seminar. And then so there are these, these people who did the uh, this all dimension, the general type case. Now in the lower dimensional case, there was this paper of Fujino and, 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 and Mori, which reduced this to the general type case. Okay, so then from now on, assume that, that, that there is this finite generation. But I would like to point out that there is actually a quite interesting open question. I think sort of. Uh, Many people don't realize that it's an open question. So, yes, are the are the plurigeneral deformation invariant? Now, I sort of like it in the stronger form that if I have a smooth family of varieties over a base, can I obtain out of it a family of their canonical? Models, a flat family of canonical models. And interestingly, this is not even only characteristic zero. So for surfaces, this, this is basically the pretty easy to get. I write down so write down so the key part is what well, I think done by Kodaira and, and Spencer that in the minus one. So if you deform the surface, then the minus one on a deformity. So, but but so the actual <coughs> was put together by Itaka. Uh, and then for three folds, it so my work with with, with uh, Mori, but it, it 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 needs a very detailed understanding of of, of flips. Now, so the most people say that the deformation in various of plurigenera was done by CU, but there were sort of two big assumptions in CU. One is that the base is reduced. So his method really says absolutely nothing about infinitesimal deformation. And he also assumed that the total space of the deformation is projective. Uh, and so then, so somewhat recently, I, I Sort of solve the case when the base is still reduced, so that's that is there's still a problem. But I only assume that I start with something projective. I don't assume that the deformation uh, themselves are are projective. And, and and in fact, you might say maybe this does not happen. But in fact, there are lots of examples that that we start with a variety of general type and. Uh, uh, Projective smooths and write on the deformation where the deformation itself is not projective. So the yeah. total space is not projective. 
fibers, the R projective, every individual fiber is projective, it needs to be proved. So it, 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 it will not be real. Uh, statement. So of coercing the lower air, 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 what I mentioned case, you have seen this start with the projective case 3, it will have deformations that are very far from algebra. But the point is that some funny thing can happen even if you start with something general type. I mean, not if the canonical class is ample, yes, so, so ample is, is an open condition. But uh, if the, the, the canonical class is not ample, then, then, then some funny things can happen in deformation. Now, so if the beta is not reduced, I understand the, the content of two, but what is the content of one now? I mean, what would it mean? Well, I mean, sort of it. It depends what you sort of want. I mean, so for instance, one way of, 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 of saying it that, for instance, if you have a deformation over an arc in scheme of lengths n, and you look at h0 of omega, is that just n times what you get in the central fiber? Okay, so this would be a sort of a numerical way of stating the deformation principle. Over artists, yeah, yeah. But so uh, the two versions are not completely equivalent, and the second one is the, the strong one. That's what they so really. No, I mean, so we would like the canonical model to be an actual functor on, 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 on families of smooth varieties, and we do not have it. In dimension starting with the So, wait, this is the obstruction to understanding the giving uh, infinitesimal structures to the modular space? Well, uh, no, because I declare that my main interests are the canonical <laughs> models. Oh, okay, I see. I see. Okay, so, so once I declare that my main interests are canonical models, there the canonical class is ample. Yeah, so, okay. so then yeah, yeah, it's exactly. okay. But, but, you know, I mean, sometime in the past, our main interest was the smooth family. Mm -hmm. and sure. Sure. Whether we can really go from smooth families to the canonical uh, models over not reduced base is, 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 is still open, so that's it. Okay. Uh, yeah, and so now I so then to sort of go now, these canonical models they are singular, so so we need to make sense of. What is the dualizing uh, ring sheaf? I mean, you, so the probability of you have seen it in the normal case. I just, I just start the dualizing sheaf over the smooth slope class, and then I just extend it, just push it forward to x. And then I will use this notation, this bracket notation. This means that I take the tensor power, and then I take the double dual. You see, e, this is not locally free. Then the tensor power it, 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 it can contain some torsion and it's not reflexive, so I just nicen it up a little bit. Now, uh, it's again a small exercise, but it sort of might be worthwhile to know that, that, that if there's a line bundle, that there's a holomorphic if line bundle on the open set, then it has at most, at most one extension to x as a and a reflexive coherence. But if you think of this topological line bundle, it may have infinite depending the extension. So, so, you sort of have to think about this a little bit when you go between sort of the churn classes. That, 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 that some, some things may happen. Uh, okay, now the, here I just summing. Examples of how how to, to write down generators of this omega of hypersurfaces you probably have seen this formula in Shapovalov's book and so you know this defines it over the open set where dg dxi is non-zero and it's a normal hypersurface that defines it everywhere. The other thing that comes up very frequently in example if you take a and then portion out by a finite group, but usually omega itself is not locally free, but uh, but some power of it is very easy to, to, to 
guy down. So it was just exactly what you would expect. Okay, so, so this is, is omega. And so uh, now come to my three definition of what a canonical singularity is. It's the same, we can pull back pluricanonical forms. So, so that's, that is basically Reed's definition. Now, there are sort of two ways of, of, of stating it. One is that if you, that you pull back the canonical class, yeah, then you get the, the canonical class is the pullback, so the plus something can happen. Okay? Uh, I mean, or that there is really this pullback map that if you, you take this amps power and you, you pull it back, you can always uh, map it to the amps power. Upset that you don't pick up and pause along the exception. Okay, and so then the internal definition of what a canonical model should be it's a normal projective variety that has canonical singularities and this omega x is ample. And so this occurs, e, e, so you might ask, what does it, does it, mean that omega x is ample and we do not assume it is locally free, but some power of it is locally free. So that's what it means, that, that, this, that, 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 that this kind of power is locally free for some m, m larger than zero, and then m for this. This uh, makes sense. So, so this is my three definition of the canonical model. And then the thesis is that these are exactly the correct analogs of smooth projective curves. So that's, and uh, I believe this is in fact very well settled. So that's, that's, uh, and yeah, this is what I say it is what I'm interested in in, in, in this canonical model in higher language. Now, uh, as I said before, to, under, to figure out what's at the boundary, uh, that sort of took longer. And so here is a, 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 a dilemma that should that should lead there. Okay. So assume that I have a smooth projective curve and I leave out a point. Okay. And I have a, a flat family of canonical models as over this. Now that it is actually fairly easy to show there is at most one extension to over this. Where omega x, I mean, okay, I'm of a smooth curve, it doesn't really matter, but in general, if the relative omega 1 should be, it is ample on every fiber, and this x itself has canonical singularity. So, so when you try to, to write down if you have sort of, sort of two such, you take a common death singularization, and you just write down this pullback formula, as you end up. Uh, this uniqueness is very easy, okay? And so now, well, so this ampleness, that actually we can, we can get, uh, get so not too bad, but the question is how can we guarantee that this X has canonical singularity? See, I'm not saying here that the fibers have canonical singularity. It's just that the total space has canonical singularity. Okay? So if you think about it, if you start in the family of smooth curves, then in the Delling Manford compactification, the fibers, they are not smooth, they have had nodes. So, so, so I get worse singularities, but the total space it has canonical singularity. And so, so what do we need? So maybe here we should sort of start this one first. So this is really yeah, so that the node x, y, equals zero is not canonical, uh, but every time you take a deformation of it, then it's an a n minus one singularity, and these are are are, are canonical. So basically, I am I am looking for an analog of this. Now, not just in the relative case that if you have so there's this divisor which will be to the central fiber. So, 
there is this enormous variety of like, the Bukharki and Bukharki. Right? And assume that uh, the complement has canonical singularities. So, so that's why you have to prove that if the fibers have canonical singularities, then the both aspects also have canonical singularities, but that's more or less funky to expect. And, well, we don't know what property D has, but the conclusion should be that an X has canonical singularities. So then the question is what comes here in this box? And basically that was how, how with Nick Shepard Baron we define semi-canonical singularities, that we try to see what comes into this box. Okay. Uh, and so, well. Oh, so of course this is this is 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 nice. I just just to make a make a make a statement, and then I say my definition is whatever makes the statement true. Okay, but it's not very helpful. So then you ask yourself, well, what is semi-canonical? And now, in fact, you have to take a step back here. The question is, what is a node? And so it's easy to say, okay, the node is this, okay? But how to characterize it abstractly? So, so what are the abstract uh, properties of the node that that, uh, that, uh, that, 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 that actually describe it? And there are so the two characterizations. And so so uh, let's write down the dualizing sheaf of a node. And so it is dx over x on the x-axis and minus dy over y on the y-axis. Uh, it is minus sign the actual batch. There is this annoying minus sign in this theory that, that is another. The pervasive, even sometimes you have to be so worry about this. Now, uh, uh, I see that this has sort of two properties that if I take a resolution, so I just take the two, the two branches apart and the uh, Pull back of sigma, it has only simple poles. Yeah, I see that it has simple poles. But you see, when I make it a characterization, then I, then I say that, it, that in any other curve singularity, well, maybe with any other curve singularity by omega c, e, e, that if there's a curve singularity with this property and omega c is locally free, then it is a node. Yeah? So, those, so more complicated singularities do not have this property. And now, then the other that's, that's interesting. So, if you compute the local volume of this, and so this integral, but this is infinite, but uh, but sort of barely. That if you uh, uh, let's get something a little bit smaller, you, you multiply it with any small pi of epsilon, then you get a finite integral. Okay. And so now the claim is that these are the two properties that should characterize. Uh, the semi log canonical uh, singularities in higher dimensions. So let's see what's the definition of semi log canonical. And so, first in co-dimensional one, I should have only nodes. So it's called the demi normal. I introduced it. It's a normal says, okay, by series moves in co-dimension one and S2. But you know, I, mean, I allow nodes, so, so that's the next best thing I can do. Then in co-dimension one, we have only nodes and S2. So, so this is a rather simple property. Uh, then we need that some power of omega x that is locally free. And it has a section sigma to the end. Now, uh, if I say that with locally, there is a section. And again, so, so the maybe sigma is determined up to an m pseudo unity. So it's not exactly well defined, but, but it's okay up to M suit of unity. And uh, now there are his three equivalent versions, and so there's a pullback version that if I take a resolution, then the canonical uh, class of the resolution is a, so if I just have this, that will be canonical property, pull up as a plus effective. But now I can have simple poles, so I can have I can add more simple poles along the exception. Now, this is actually equivalent then to saying that if I look at the R star of omega x and pull back and I map here, again, I can have only an R for if I, if I have an R star. 
And then from especially if you have a differential geometer that it is is it's very nice that this integral is it is only very mild growth mild growth. You see the sigma was well defined only up to uh of unity, but then the sigma vert sigma bar is actually well defined. So then the sigma of unity it goes out and now very frequently this integral is infinite. But as soon as I, if I multiply it by something that vanishes, then all the things that are broken. So then I get something that, that is, is finite. So now the nice thing is that these three properties, they are equivalent in, in, in all dimensions and, and uh, so they define uh, this semi-long phenomenon. Okay, now let's see if, if, this definition does what we, we were hoping it, it does, okay? So then I have an X and I have a Cartier divisor. Uh, and let's take a resolution. Uh, <coughs> maybe a log resolution so that, uh, that but this is only a, not like a, a, a simple normal crossing divisor. So I write the canonical class is the pullback of the canonical class J, and J for supports I choose to say the Jacobian system of Germany. Okay. Uh, and so then and the J is at least zero if, if X has canonical singularities. So by this side the whole coefficient are, are not negative. And uh, there's a base change here that's needed that we can Essentially, assume that uh, the coefficients are in the R order of magnitude. Now, let's just write down the adjunction formula for the canonical class of this d by. Now, this is what the adjunction formula says. <coughs> now, then I just substitute in what's k by. So, so then I have, have this pullback. So, this is the pullback of the canonical class plus j minus e. I see that this suggests that this j is larger or equal to zero precisely when every coefficient here is uh, at least minus one. Now, to go from left to right, that's of course completely fine. Yeah, that, that because I'm subtracting all the ones. Now, it would seem that you can can go back to the, the other way easily, but the problem is there might be some exceptional divisor that becomes disjoint. From this d by and so then, then this does not say anything. So, I mean, in in some sense, in in the height side, if you are technically strong, then the easiest is to to take something like a log canonical model where every exceptional divisor intersects d by, so that can be arranged. But but at, at least if it's better to prove that the, that the coefficients of j or maybe the j minus e d they have some 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 strong convexity properties. And so, so once uh, they are largely equal minus one somewhere, then so the propagates goes goes up. So so the, 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 that's a non-trivial uh, statement, but by now we have very simple proofs of this. So so it, it's oh, so. So, and so that at least uh, a definition of you know, semi log canonical sort of does this job. Now, I must admit that in some sense, our definition is, is uh, much larger because not all semi log canonical singularities are smoothable. Yes, yeah? so, so the original uh, question really asks only about the case when it's obtained. As a digital generation of something with canonical singularities, so, so we have a more general uh, notion there. Of the surfaces, they are almost the same, not completely. There is more of a divergence in higher dimension. Of this this becomes important in some questions, but but I but so for now it. it Okay, now maybe I should give some examples of, of semi-log canonical 
singular is so surfaces normal case is the main thing is cones over elliptic curves and now then there are the cusps where so, so basically you take the cone over a cycle of rational curve now of course that's not normal but if you smooth it just a little bit so then then you get what's called the cusp singularities where the exceptional set of the minimal resolution in the cycle of pressure uh, curve that these are basically all the the, 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 the new ones that are not caution. Okay. Uh, then the standard non-normal examples, there were two smooth brand, two surfaces meet or where three smooth surfaces meet transfers early. And also the Whitney and we have one pi square eight now, then the higher dimensions of the standard examples are again uh, just cone. So that if you take the cone over something thing that is that is final, that's that actually is slightly better. But if you take the cone over Calabiao, like here an elliptic curve, here I can only get flat. The cone is okay. So here when that R is zero, so the cone over Calabiao, that's at least what used to be the typical example. Okay. Now, uh, there's another interesting thing, question here. What can we say about the local pi 1 of, of low canonical or semi low canonical singularity? So that means I just take a small neighborhood and, of course, that's contractible, but if I remove the origin, then I get something that's usually. Uh, I think it's never contractible, but so is it true? So, so, so what can I say about the fundamental group of this low canonical singularity? And now, so the people who have been thinking about this cone, so you know that if you think about the, the cone over a Calabiau, well, a Calabiau at least it is a say that the canonical class is trivial, the, the, the largest fundamental group. And it's a billion varieties, so so it's, it's, it's a free abelian group, and then the neighborhood is a circle bundle over it. Okay, so then uh, then uh, basically it's a polycyclic group, so there is a free abelian group, and it's extended by one copy of Z. And at some point, various people conjecture that that is what you get. Now I show that. In dimension three, you can get the fundamental group of every topological surface, in fact, and now these are at least much larger group. And there is some very recent work of Figueroa and, and Moraga, they, they constructed a few more, and but, but sort of what's exciting that if they can just push their method a little further, then it will show that every finitely presented group will be the, the local fundamental group of the local canonical singularity. So that's the best you can hope because if you have a compact topological space, or okay, let's say compact CW complex or something like that, then it's fundamental group is finitely presented. So oh, it was a theorem of Kapovich and Myself, that, that at least there are singularities, so for every finitely presented the group will be the local fundamental group of that the singularity of, of that dimension. Maybe three, something like that, but but the so local canonical, yeah, so that's, that's actually. Quite surprising, and so if you do slightly better than log canonical, is something log terminal, then then work that started with Chen Yang Shu and then completed by Lucas Brown showed that they have finite fundamental groups. So so that means a really big jump here that that, that if you go to something. But then we don't expect any structure. And so oh. And so here is what I hope now that 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 that, that, 
That's what every group will occur. But, but for smooth able or canonical singularity, there should be that is possible. And so, so some of the big jumps should be that 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 you know the just local the just local canonical that's that's a very complicated class, but if it appears at the boundary of our our moduli problem, then it should be much better. Yeah. We're not um, just canonical. Hmm? We're not just canonical. And so the canonical singularity. Well, yeah. No, no, no. no. I think there it, it is. No, I think they should be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But maybe it's not Can, canonical. I mean, canonical. Yeah, canonical. Yes, 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 okay, sorry, yes, yes, yes. Oh, so they are yeah. finite, yes. yes. Okay. But then, if, if, if there's still the question whether for uh, mutable implies for the ticket, is there or not? Uh, yes, 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 so, so that's, 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 that would uh, be nice. Uh, 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 but it might even binary, imply, uh, uh, it might even imply more, yeah. The binary tetrahedral group, uh, you'd say, Canonical singularities. Oh, 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 okay. So, so maybe I should not have said polycyclic. I should have said polycyclic by finite. So it is a finite okay. index subgroup. Yeah. Yeah. Is is yeah. is, yeah. is polycyclic? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, so now we have an answer <laughs> to to question two. That the stable variety, which should be the higher dimensional and more stable curve, and so there should be demi normal, that means at worst nodes in co dimension one and it should satisfy SAS condition S2. The singularities should be only semi log canonical and it should be projective, and omega x should be. Okay, so these are, are, are then the objects of. Okay, now, and so, so what's the, the uh, uh, way to prove that it's stable <laughs> it, it exists? And so, so then if we start with a, uh, with a smooth curve and I have a morphism, so phi to b, where the generic fiber is smooth of general type, and all fibers are reduced simple the normal. Well, so the first condition is, of course, I start just with anything, I take a resolution, and the general fiber will be smooth, and then uh, um, Mumford and his, his, his uh, students prove the semi-stable reduction theorem that at least after a base change, I can assume that the central fiber also has synchronometers. And now it's actually fairly easy to show that if I just take the canonical model of this, then all the fibers are stable varieties. So the general fibers, they will be canonical models, and the, and the special fibers, they are, are stable varieties. Now, I see this is, is uh, nice as long as you have smooth things degenerating, but in the boundary, we you know, we of course have reducible things, and so then we want to understand uh, what happens when the stable model is degenerate. And so, we sort of might say you do exactly the same thing, uh, but the big, big problem is that MMP does not work for simple normal crossing variety. And so, there are even projective surfaces with only normal crossing singularities. Whose canonical ring is not finite degenerate. Okay, so, so, uh, so one solution is well, so, 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 uh, so saying that that's what we should do. Well, if we have just normalize and so that we keep track of the track of images of the of the nodes, so there is not just 
various varieties, but we have these divisors in them that become nodes, take the stable limit and then glue. And now this last step, the gluing back, is, is sort of much harder in higher dimension than for curve. You know, if you have a curve and you have two points, you just identify the two points, you have a, a projective curve. So I would like to just give you just one example that shows that this gluing is can be actually quite tricky. So these are the triangular pillows. So I take I take two copies of P2, and I have the coordinate axis in them x, y, z, and then I just identify these coordinate axes. Okay? And so uh, but here is some shift, okay? So uh, along the uh, <coughs> And the z equals zero axis, I, I just multiply by a constant lambda, and then a mu, and a mu. So then, you know, it's very easy to see that after identification, you get this scheme, okay? And now the question is, when is this projected? Well, anyone knows when this is projected? Well, actually, that's correct. So that would, that lambda mu nu that should be a root of root of unity. Okay. Now you see now this suggests that sort of with gluing, you have to keep track of some very subtle information. You're not just just that you do somehow. You know, so for curves, you have two points that identify as only one way of way of doing it. But uh, but in higher dimensions, it is it is more complicated and Actually, it's quite interesting because you should think of this as a reducible K3 surface. Yeah? And so, so it's a trivial canonical class. And so, so these are the simplest examples of, of non-projective K3 surfaces when you do this gluing where the product is, is uh, not torsion. Now, the, in the case of degree 2 case, it has been considered some time ago, and so, so the question is: when you get a get a projective to the K three surface this way that has degree two, and the correct and the correct reference is Menelaus of Alexandria. Okay. Okay, everyone, uh, have you seen the connection between Menelaus's work and, and K3 surfaces? And so, this is a degree, hmm? and so it's a degree 2K3 surface if the pullback of O1 has a section. So I take a section here, that's a line. Okay, then the question is the other side, there should be a section that also gives you a line. Now, what does the the theorem of Menelaus says, the theorem that, that Menelaus proved is, of course, if you did some high school geometry, that if you have a triangle and you take a third line, okay, well, then you get various ratios. Yeah? And in the product of the ratios is one if you have a line, okay? That's exactly the degree two case when and this product is exactly one. Okay. So okay, now I have no idea whether that's in fact when allows. <laughs> <laughs> there was one website that was about him and had this this picture there, but there was no but there was no there was no further reference, and so, but, but, but there are so some famous Greek scientists. There are some of these copies of some original uh, uh, statues that came down for us. So, but you know, and anyway, it is it was nice to knew that the first substantial work about K three surfaces was done by by Menelaus or Alexander. Okay, so 
Any questions at this point? Can you come back to this uh, distinction between semi log and non semi log? Yes. As an effect on the fundamental rule, we ought to expect something to go the other way, the fundamental rule decides when canonical, when semi canonical is non. No, 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 I don't, don't think so. So, uh, for instance, I mean, all hypersurface singularities of, of dimension at least three, they have trivial, uh, trivial, uh, or fundamental group, but, but so, so, yeah. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Okay, ah, actually, okay. So, now we come to question three, what are the correct analogs of flat families of, of stable curves. And now, of course, most people would say, well, they should be exactly flat families of stable varieties. But the surprising thing is that this is the wrong answer. And it's a very wrong answer. But, but, but the understanding it, it, it took me quite a long time. So, so, uh, so in fact, the first example that, that that really hints at it, it, it goes back to Bertini, that if you look at, at the cone over the degree, degree four rational normal curve, yeah, so it's the degree four rational curve inside uh, P4, take the cone over it, then it has two smoothing. So one smoothing is to a very laser surface, the other is to a root surface. And for this, the self-intersection of the canonical pass is different. Yeah? You know, normally, we would think the self-intersection of the, the canonical class as the simplest invariant that we can have. And so, so I mean, that's really probably the best uh, higher dimensional version of the genus. And so, so the fact that it can always, and this colon, it has, the ideal log terminus is definitely semi log canonical singularity. So, this is sort of bad news that the self intersection of the canonical class can jump in these deformations. But uh, I would like to outline an, an, an even more shocking example. So, it is, it is built on a, on a construction of Franciosi, Farding, and Rolenske, but there have been, been similar constructions in the literature at Vlad. I believe that Lee and Park were the, the first. So, but these papers, they, 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 they really focus only on one side of the deformation. So, anyhow, so uh, we will we'll think about some Zima 2 covers, but so just of P2. So I take, uh, for instance, three homogeneous polynomials of certain degrees, F, G, H, okay? And then I can, can take these three double covers, yeah? So I take F times G, I take square root of it, that's a double cover, so I have these three double cover. And then if I look at the composite, that's a degree four cover, yeah? Uh, Galois group Zima 2 squared, and so exactly the three subgroups of the form Zima 2, so there are three ways to factor it through, and, and so this, and, and so these are the, are the three intermediate and, and variety. Now, for here, I just uh, want to understand the singularities. So, so typically, only two of these will have a common root, yeah, so there are. But, but I have three curves, when two of them meet, say F and G transfers and then H does not go through it, that's the local coordinate like X, Y, and Z. Okay? So then here I, I think that here, this will be just then the square root of Y and this will be just the square root of X. Yeah? And so if I take the composite, I take two square roots, so this is just smooth. So, so at least it's good. So in a typical situation, I get something smooth. I will need sort of one special case when they have when three curves meet at a point with independent tangents. So basically, local is like x and y and x minus y. 
And another claim is that I get this quotient singularity. Okay? And I think this is how you, you come. So x will be this, y will be that, and x will be that. You have to check that the square roots, they are in fact, like that, you get an invariant, invariant polynomial scale in this type of stuff. Okay? And so, so, I think the main thing you should remember that in general you get something smooth, and then in, in terms of this special case, you get this singular. Okay. And so now let's look at the, at, at the special case. That is, f and g have degree 3, but h just has degree 1. Okay? Now, and so, and then let's say the corresponding z2 comes. Okay, so let's see whether we can understand it in general. So, so f dot g has degree 6, okay? So that means that if I take the square root, that's a degree two k three surface. It has it has uh, nodes. I think there's nine nine nodes, but they get sort of smoothed out by the time we, we get to it. But that's a degree two k three surface. So it's canonical class is trivial. And so when I go all the way to the way to x, it's canonical class. It comes from the ramification by x maps to this k three surface. So that's exactly the pre image of the line. So that means the canonical class is the image of the line. Ah, I thought I fixed that both S and X are the same here. Okay, I'm sorry. I, so, so, so anyhow, S and X are the same here. I really thought I, I had fixed it this morning, but okay, maybe I didn't type so Okay. And so anyhow, so, so, so this x, which is the same as s, this is smooth, the canonical class is m point k s squared equals 1, so that means that there is no surface. Now, let's look at the special case when the three curves have two intersection points in common. So there are two points of a line where so the both curves pass through. Now, as we discussed, we get here, we get here two singularities of this form, C2 over one one four. And then we see this curve is the premise because of the ramification. This curve C uh, that will be singular, it has nodes at the both of these points. So when I I resolve these points, so for each of these I get a smooth rational curve with some intersection minus four. And then the intersect we see in two points. There was a note here when I blow up uh, that I have to, there are two intersection points. And then you compute that is that the C becomes a minus one curve. And, and this is still the canonical class, yes? So, so I did not introduce anything. This is still the canonical class. It's a minus one curve. So when I contract it, then the canonical class went away. Which means there's a K3 surface. Okay? So that means that, that, that I have a surface whose minimal resolution is a K3 surface blown up at, at one point. Now, uh, since this S0 has rational singularity, any flat deformation of a resolution of it, it contracts to a flat deformation of S0. So for non-rational singularities, there could be some embedded the point problems, but for rational singularities, you, you do not. And so now what is it? It's a K3 surface blown up at, at, at one point. So now, for instance, I can start with this K3 and, the, and to deform it in a non-algebraic direction, okay? where so the order curves Curves vanish. So that that means when the C1 and E2 that they they vanish, that the contraction map it just has to be an isomorphism there. There's nothing to contract. Okay. So what did we end it up? So we have this this S0 that has ample canonical class and it has two two quotient singularities, bit of the simplest possible <coughs> quotient singularity, and it has two flat deformations. On the one side, I get 
for those circuits with ample canonic gap time. And the other side, I get the gate three circuits blown up at one point. So the Kodai dimension jump, and maybe even worse, the K3 surface can be non algebraic okay. And so now, you see, there's no way that we can moduli space that includes Godot surfaces and no non algebraic K3 surfaces. That just, just will not work. So we have to do something different. Uh, and well, that's the. the, the Question is what distinguishes the the two sides. So let us think about this a, a little bit. So we, that, that, that you look at it if I am on the, 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 the on those side, then then two times the relative canonical class ends up a Cartier divisor. So I this is actually fairly easy to see from the construction that we had. And then if I'm on the other side, so where I deform it to bone up K3, well, that you have to check again. It's not too hard. <laughs> no multiple of the relative canonical class is a, a, a Cartier device. So that means that some of this is the property that we should, should focus on is the relative canonical class a Cartier or some multiple of Cartier. Now, Unfortunately, for infinitesimal deformations, this condition that some multiple is Cartier is, is rather unpredictable. With Klaus Altman, I worked out the first order deformation of cyclic portion surface singularities, and it is a, it is a not particularly nice answer. Somehow it's very complicated. So we have to find something better, and that will be the topic of tomorrow's lecture.